Hello. Hello, Barney. Yeah. Hey, it's uh, Roy. I live over on Pelican. I'm your neighbor. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Um, I was just wondering how how come you toilet papered my trees on Halloween night? We we figured out that it was you. <laughs> you would be so wrong about that. I don't even live there. Well, why would you come all the way back here just to toilet paper someone's tree? Did I did I do something wrong? When when you lived here. <laughs> Are you- are you kidding me? Oh no, not at all. You're I just we, we we saw on the security camera that it was you, and I'm not sure why you do. Do you know that. what I look like? Well, yeah. Do you know what I look like? Of course. Yeah, you lived over on. You don't live here in the neighborhood anymore. I have never lived there in the neighborhood. Well, why would you come over here just to toilet paper my trees? That doesn't make sense. But believe me, a 67 year old, I have no interest in toilet papering anything on Halloween yeah, or any well, other time. That sounds like something that uh, someone who toilet papers trees would say. Yeah. To try and convince <laughs> this me is that a it's a joke, right? No, not at all. I just you're joking. No, I don't. I, I don't no joke at all, not, are, especially not on a Sunday. I wasn't there on Halloween. I can prove that I wasn't there on Halloween. Uh, where, what were you doing? Whose trees were you toilet papering? I live in Durham. What? <laughs> I live in Durham. Yeah, it's it's a short but drive. I'm, I'm sorry that uh, you know. I don't know how. You, if you really believe that. Um, I'd be glad to meet with you sometime. I'm going to be there in a week or so. Oh, see? See, you're here all the time. You probably come here all the time to toilet paper trees. Undoubtedly, I do. That must be it. Yep. Okay, well, whatever. I was just hoping for an apology, but um, if you're not yeah, going to give you're me... Never gonna... Huh? You're joking. You've got to be joking. No, I, I'm not you? joking at all. I'm just... I'm just I, 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 I well, forgive you. you live in? I, I live over no, on... No, no, please. I live over on Pelican. I don't want your forgiveness. Oh, you're gonna get it. You're getting my forgiveness. So, uh, you know, I, how do you find my number? Uh, it's in the directory. How do you get my number? It's in the directory. What do you mean you don't live oh, here? It's yeah. in the directory. How would it be there if you don't live here? I own, oh, because I own the house. Your story's just full of holes. I know. Isn't it awful? Uh, okay. Yep, well, but, I'm sorry you feel that way. Oh, come I, on. I'm totally no, blown away. No fake okay. apologies. All right. It has to be a real one. All right. Goodbye. All right. Bye, Barney. I forgive you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. You are listening to the Snowplow Show. This is the 406th episode, and it's sponsored by Scott. Thank you, Scott, for being a supporter over on the Patreon, patreon.com slash phone losers. Today's show is a live show. I did this show yesterday on um, October 21st, 2017, and I will play that show in just a few minutes. We have a few announcements first. I guess the first one should be that I'm sorry, everyone, that I made you lose your minds by not doing a show all week. Everybody on the Facebook group thinks that the show is over forever. So if you're listening to this, be happy because the show is not over forever. Why would you think that? I would have told you guys beforehand if the show was over forever. What kind of Christian do you think I am? I'm trying to make up for it, though, by doing a show this weekend. So hopefully you don't hate this show too much. I've got a small minor update about my legal situation, which if you're a Hobo Sode listener, you know all of this already. So I'm just going to do a quick, very quick rundown. On Monday, I was sentenced to no jail time at all, so that's pretty happy. That was my main concern with this whole thing. I've been in jail before. It's pretty boring. I don't want to be in jail, especially for eight months. And it was a real possibility that that could have happened. We were preparing for it, both with this show and with stuff in my real life. But luckily, that didn't happen. I am a felon now for prank calls, or I guess technically for computer hacking. But sort of prank calls, you know, they kind of lumped it all together. And I have eight months of, um, what's it called? Home detention? It's not house arrest. I'm not stuck inside the house. But I will have a curfew soon. They haven't set all that up yet, but they think they most likely will. That's kind of a bummer, but it's not jail, so yay. I also have to pay $18,000 in restitution. That's the money that they spent on the investigation and everything else. And yeah, that's a lot of money. It sucks. But I'm sure they're going to give me a few years to pay it. We haven't worked out all the details yet. And I'm doing community service. 250 hours of community service. Which I think I can do pretty much anywhere I want around here. Any place that's a non-profit, I think, from what I understand. That should all be interesting, but I don't think there's a whole lot else to say about it. 
I talked about this on a hobo sode the other day, and you know, there's a few extra details in there if you want to go listen to that on patreon.com slash phone losers. And as I said before, I am going to talk to an attorney, maybe my attorney, maybe a different attorney, but I've been compiling a list of questions for an attorney about prank calls, like things that we should and should not do. And I will share my findings with you guys on this show eventually. I think it'll be a little while before I get around to doing that whole thing, but it should be fun. It should be very informative for all of us and hopefully keep us all out of trouble in the future. In other news, we have a Halloween pumpkin carving contest again this year, as ordered by Brad the producer, and I pretty much completely forgot about it, but you guys have been sending pumpkins to my email at snowplowshow at phonelosers.com, and there's some really good ones in there. Someone made a Sensei Doug pumpkin. In fact, here, let me scroll through my email, see if I can find any of these. Oh yeah, here it is, Sensei fucking Doug from Tina and CJ. And here's an Obey pumpkin with a cactus on it from Hipped slash I-C-U-P-P-C. What does that mean? And I don't know. I can't find any of the others, but there's a Facebook page, like a photo album of all of the PLA pumpkins. I will put a link to that in the show notes. And I'm going to work on my emails tonight, get all those out of there and start using them as show art. So look for a link to all the pumpkins in the show notes. And if you want to make a PLA pumpkin, just, you know, do it and send it to snowplowshow at phonelosers.com. Hopefully I will see it and post it this year. And is this a contest? I don't even know. I don't know what to give away as prizes. All the PLA coins are gone, and all the PLA buttons are gone. By the way, button orders. There are button orders in my email still. You guys have paid for buttons. I haven't sent them out. It's been like over a month, maybe two. I'm sorry. I know I've mentioned this before, and then I never got around to them again. But I promise I won't forget. I'm gonna. I'm hoping to work on emails tonight, and I should be sending a few of you some emails, hopefully, to sort all this mess out. And also, Patreon supporters that have asked for stickers, I've been dumping all of your emails into a certain directory so I can just sit down and do them all at once. You know, address envelopes. So you'll get those soon. I'll probably respond and let you know they're on the way. Uh, one last thing. Did you know there's a PLA Discord? There is. I promise, I'm not lying about it. If you're into chat rooms and PLA, then you should visit the Discord. I will have a link to that in the show notes. I don't think there's an easy URL for me to say. Like, there is over at the Hijinks room. They've got this fancy discord.gg slash pranks to reach their prank call chat room. I'm not that fancy, so I'll just have a link to it in the show notes if you want to go visit. And while you're at it, maybe hang out in the Hijinks channel. There's a lot of people there from the community, like Dwight, XYZ, Carlito... Who else is in there? Jag TV. There's Buster Casey. Mr. Clay. Uh, Xander Fett. He's in there. I don't know. A lot of people on the Discord these days. So go join the Discords. I'll have a link to both Hijinks and PLA's Discord in the show notes. And by the way, if you're on the PLA Discord and you're a Patreon supporter, it automatically gives you a special tag on your account that says you're an enabler of the Snowplow Show. And everybody needs that. Anyway, here is the live show from yesterday morning where I once again pretended to be on the International Space Station just to see if I could get some people to help me out with a few things up here on the space station. So here it is. Here is the live show. Radio Shack Storewide Manager's Red Tag Sale is on now. We've slashed prices 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%. Save on famous Radio Shack Hi-Fi, car stereo, radios, toys, TV games, calculators, walkie-talkies, and CB radios. Look for the big red tag. Save like never before on these and literally hundreds of red tag specials. Hurry into Radio Shack today. So, um, what are we doing today? Hey, I, I, I'm doing a live show here. Hi, everyone. We're going to make calls to people from this um, church directory. I forget who submitted it, but we're not doing church pranks. Instead, we're going to um, call from space. That's what we're going to do. We're going to call from space. I want to do some more um, space station calls because I was doing those on one show forget how far I got with that, but it doesn't seem like I did that many of them. So that's what we're starting this show with. Maybe we'll do the entire show. Nothing but space station calls. I know space is fake, Elky, but everyone thinks it's real, so good enough. Doesn't matter. So I don't know. I guess I'll just start calling. Uh, I'm calling them from a local number, so they'll pick up. I know that doesn't seem very space-like, but... I'll just tell them we tapped into a local number with microwave beams, I guess. Oh, Killbeer, I'll tell people that the Earth is flat. I'll be like, hey, by the way, did you know the, the Earth is just a big cube? Wait, no, it's a flat. It's not a cube. What am I talking about? It's flat. Durr. 
Oh, good point, Corbin. How thick is a flat Earth? So it might be a cube. We don't know. Nobody's ever been down there. Good point. It is a cube. I was right. Hey, remember, um, like, okay, in a, in a, in a, um, a hobo sode, I called a lady on the last show, and that's the only call I did in the show. And it looks like her info's right here. I think I can uncross it out. Her name was Katie. I just want to um, see how she's feeling several days later about being told, oh, wait, no, I wasn't telling her space stuff. I was telling her simulated reality stuff, but who cares? I'm going to call her, see if she picks up. I just want to tell her it was a joke and see if she liked the joke. I'm not going to prank her anymore. Yeah, she was a sim. That's what it Hold was. On. Hi, is Katie around? No, she's not. Who's calling? Ah, this, uh, don't worry about it. I was just calling to, uh, you know, just to, just to, to chat. Try and talk some more shit about a stupid game. Don't call back. No, look, I just I actually wanted to tell her I was sorry for prank. Call. Okay, there she, there he goes. <laughs> they they sound like they'd be so much fun if they would just not hang up on me. They would just stay on the phone and talk to me. But no. <laughs> and Zach says, "Oh my God, she got deleted. It happened. I told her I was going to pull the plug." All right. Let's call Dwayne and Jennifer. Balls. We're sorry. You have reached a... You know what? I'm going to change my phone number to that phone number. Because I don't have a very good caller ID number in here right now. I I, I don't know why, but I, I think I picked like the University of um, whatever state this is. I, I just put their fax line in there. It was like a research department or something. I, I wanted it to say research or something on Caller ID. It probably doesn't. Probably just says university. So yeah, that's my new Caller ID. Yeah, Elky, I want to do more simulation calls, but the problem is that nobody believed them. I got hung up on. They just didn't understand it. Like, I can't figure out a good way to explain it so people understand. So Katie, she's the only one ever that really responded at all. I mean, other people, you know, they just yelled at me like, fuck you, and hung up. Hello? Hi, Victor. Hi. Hey, it's Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm actually, um, I'm calling you from the space station up in space, you know? Hello? Are, are you not home right now? No. Are uh, this two now? Okay, this is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station, you know, up in space. Uh-huh. uh-huh. You know? And um, I was hoping you'd be home because I wanted to uh, try an experiment. We were, we were going to uh, do some things to your house and, and see if you could notice it. Where are you at right now? I, like, maybe I could put my GPS coordinates at your current location. I'll, I'll move. All right, right now. I'll move the death ray a little bit to the right. All right, right now. Driving. Right? What? I'm driving, driving. Ah, so you're not in a fixed location. Crap. I can't vaporize your car that way. The technology's <laughs> just not there. Yeah, I don't think this is going well. How are you doing? What's your name? Victor? Yeah. Hey, Victor. Hello. What you doing today? Uh, not much. Uh, you said it's, uh, your name what now? My name is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station. You know that thing up in uh -huh. in, in outer, in, I mean, in space. Right. Yeah, I'm calling you from there. I, I'm like up here with uh, I don't know, like six other astronauts. Okay. Hi. What you doing? Uh, just driving from the, here to the store. Cool. Hey, um, could you stop your car for a second and and get out and look up? I want to try something. Okay. All right, just stop the car. Where, are you on a on, on on a highway or just a residential street? Try not to kill yourself. That's the last thing I need yeah, at this okay. point. Okay, I'm looking up now. What? Oh, did you get out of your car? Uh huh. Where, where 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 was your car? Were you on a highway? Were you just like? Yeah, on the highway. Okay. Photos. Okay, so you're on the side of the road. Are you out of your car? Yeah. Are you pulled over so no one's gonna sideswipe you? Not yet. Okay, thank God. Uh, okay. All right, I'm I'm looking for your location. I'm I'm going to shine a big mirror down at you. 
And if you see the grass start to uh, smoke, like, step away from that part, okay? Right. All right, here it goes. Do you see it? Are you looking up? Do you have a lot of view of the sky? Yeah. Cool, cool. Can you see it? Do you see the mirror? Oh, shit, I'm good. I just saw I was in the mirror. Is it really hot? Is it getting warmer? Yeah. Like, do you feel suddenly very, very warm? It's 74 degrees here. Yeah. You what? It's 74 it's degrees here. Yeah. Oh, seven, 70 something degrees? Like, it, not for long. Yeah. Not for long. That, that city's about to heat up. Why? Because I'm shining a mirror down on it. Did, did you get back in the okay, car? Okay. No. Oh, are you still looking up? Uh huh. Do you see it? I'm blinking it. I'm blinking it at you. I'm blinking the mirror. I'm turning it on and off. I still don't see it. You don't see the mirror. Uh, oh, sh- wait a minute. You're not in. You're not in Russia. I no. mean, South Carolina. No. Ah, uh, yeah. I got my coordinates wrong. I'm sorry. I'll let you go. Oh, he he hung up on me. Okay. I was trying to figure out a way to end it, and he just hung up on me. Yeah, that was a pretty sloppy first call. That was awful. I'm embarrassed of it. I didn't know what to say. You know, once I tell him I'm, I'm shining mirrors down on him, he doesn't see him. What do I do? Oops. Wrong location. I don't know. What I really want to do is um, get someone to go out in their yard. I want to tell them I want to throw something down at him and have him catch it. See if they'll do that. I'll just be like, hold out your hands, and I'll just put it right there oh yeah yeah duck hunt says he probably actually just got hit by a mac truck that's all he didn't hang up your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message marcus wants me to uh, ask for relationship advice i want to hook up with the uh i don't know the <laughs> who all's up here I, I don't even know who's in the space station See, I got a crush on some Russian woman up here. What do I do? How do I talk to her? Help. Like uh, a week or so ago, I set up a bunch of um, uh, background noises. So like here on the soundboard, I've got I've got the Voyager. That's loud. Oh, that's the warp room. I've got the next generation bridge. So it'll, it'll sound totally realistic that I'm calling from space because got next generation sounds. Got the Voyager bri- bridge here. Got the um. I think this would be the most realistic one. The uh, the original Star Trek with that weird ass. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> that thing. What the fuck is that? I hate that noise. Or I could just play them all at once. There we go. Yep, calling from space. Now there's just no way they're not going to believe me. I'm just going to turn on original Star Trek. That's the best one. Too much noise otherwise. I could put on Metroid. You reached the home of Jane and Robin Bar. Let's try Gregory. It's always Gregory's fault. <laughs> David wants me to do TIE fighter sound effects. It's a good idea. He's like, hold on. We're going to attack by the rebels. Wait, no, that's not the rebels. Sorry. It's been a while since I've seen that stupid show or movie or whatever it was. Ugh. By the way, sorry I've been gone all week. It's been a busy week here. Had shit to do. This person cannot be reached at the moment. Hello. Hi. Uh, is this is this Jennifer? Yes. Hey, Jennifer. This is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station up in space. Uh huh. H- how are you doing today? Good. How are you? Oh, pretty good. Are you surprised to be getting a call from us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. We do this every once in a while. We just wanted to. We're like passing over overhead right now, like right above your house. Are you home right now? No. Ah, darn it. Crud. 
Where are you at? And where are you from? I'm calling you from the International Space Station. And uh-huh. I, I, we, were, we were just getting ready to pass over your house, and I wanted to try an experiment real quick. But I guess you're not even home. Oh. And you won't tell me where you are, because you're all paranoid. Oh, well, whatever. Fuck science, right? Hello? Oh, hi, Jason? Yeah. Hey, where are you guys at? Um, why? Oh, well, I, this is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station. Are you guys out yeah. out, out eating or something? Well, uh, why? I mean, what what difference does it matter? <laughs> well, I wanted to try an experiment, but um, your wife's being all all weird with me and won't even tell me where you guys are. I was hoping you were at home. Well, because it's none of your business. That's why. Well, it's for science. God damn it! I was gonna drop something out the window and, and make you guys catch it or see if it landed in your yard. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, yeah. You just just keep cussing there, big dog. Hey, hey, hey <laughs> don't call me big dog, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, you're a lieutenant, and, and <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> oh, it's funny that I'm a lieutenant? What, what are you, just jealous yeah. because you never got to be a lieutenant? No, because you're not a lieutenant, because uh, a lieutenant in the uh, at the International Space Station NASA wouldn't be cussing somebody they just called randomly on the phone, you jackass. How, how, how the fuck would you know? You don't know what we talk like. We don't have rules up here. We don't follow society's rules. He hung up. <laughs> Lieutenants don't cuss. Doesn't he ever watch war movies? They cuss all the time. I think. I don't know. What the fuck's a lieutenant anyway? That's right, Marcus. Nobody owns space. We talk how we want up here. We've got our own private language, our own secret language up here. Because we're in space. We're not confined by Earth's dumb language rules. We can say whatever we want. I want to call Jason on his... That, you know what? I'm, I'm calling Jason. I'm going to call him on his... Oh, I can't. Ah, whatever. Never mind. Forget Jason. I just wanted to call him back and say fuck you. Tell him to go sock a dick. Because <laughs> apparently that's how I say sock a dick. I think I'm Austrian or something. Hello. Hello, Nathan? Yeah. Hey, Nathan. This is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station. You know, up in space. Nathan? Oh, come on, Nathan. Let's... I should tell him we, we released the, the waste from the space station, and we miscalculated, and it's going to land on his car. Move your car, quick. It's on the way. Don't take more than 45 seconds. Hurry, hurry. Your call has been forwarded to an automated... As a matter of fact, what the hell? Um, like, why didn't I do that for the ding? The ding notes. If I have any ding calls in that one voicemail, which I haven't checked all week because I've been so busy, I'm going to say that I accidentally dinged their car by dropping a load of waste from the International Space Station. That's the next thing that has to happen on car ding notes. Yeah, Killdeer doesn't know what he's talking about. They just drop it like in, an, like in an airplane. Don't you know how things work? And then it just, it just falls from the sky. Durr. The number you have reached. I'm try Norman's cell phone. Space condoms. What the fuck's a space condom? Yeah, throw it in the air. We'll have a robot arm reach down and grab it. Great idea, Nunu. Hello. Hello, Norman? 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 Ah, Norman hung up. I think he's having issues. He's probably not home anyway. There's not really any um, carding numbers, you know, any, any new ones, but, but, hold on, I'm going to try something. I remember where it is. It's not the space sound.
Man, you guys are really trying to get me to sign up with ADT security. Is that some kind of a threat? There's someone that needs some work done on the porch. Holy shit, I need to do a whole show of this voicemail because you guys are sending a lot of stuff in. I haven't been looking at it. But I don't see any um, carding stuff in here. But, but, hold on. I'm checking. No, there's nothing in here. Not, not cardings. Um, but we got this one. Hey, Roy. I uh, call me 765. Ah, Did no, 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 no. <laughs> Stop it. Wait. Find your note in my truck. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> okay, I regret jumping. That's going to happen. If anyone ever picks up. This is Dale. Leave a message after the top. Damn it, Dale. I'm gonna try like, I don't know, two two more. Two more um cardings, and then we're going back to just being from the space station and dropping shit on their house. Hi, this message is for Roy. I'm calling because I got a weird note saying you dinged my car. Uh, actually, it was a motorcycle, so uh I don't know, maybe someone made a mistake. I don't believe this one at all. Uh, good morning, this is Brad Robertson. If you could just give me a call back real quickly, I would... Hmm. What about? I don't trust anyone named Brad. Hello, Brad. Yeah. Hey, it's uh, this is Tuck Pendleton. Um, I left a note on your thing. It's really loud there. I'm sorry. Who is this? Uh, my name is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I left. I had someone leave a note uh, on your windshield. Yes. You remember? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was an accident. I'm sorry about that. Sorry it took so long to call back. They only let us call every couple of weeks. They only let us dial out up here in the space station. Is, it, is there any way I can call you back? I'm actually at the game right now. I can't hear very well. Which game? Pardon me? Which game is it? Mizzou. Oh, wow. Super gay. Gay, yeah. gay, gay. Wow. Watching a Mizzou game. Ugh. Ugh. So, is, can I call you back? Yeah, sure. Whatever. Just call me back. All right, what's your name? I'm sorry. Uh, Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station up in space. Okay. All right, is this a good number to call you back on? Yep, yep, just call me back after that really dumb game you're watching. I hope they okay, lose. Thank you. Whatever. Fucking Brad. All right, one, one more. Uh, I just saw another message from Brad, and he's like, you left a note in my car at the University of Missouri, and <laughs> that would explain Mizzou, I guess. There's an insurance company calling me. Uh, Roy, this is Greg. Hey, I'm anxiously awaiting to uh, hear from you regarding uh, you. Uh is that the same guy? No, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, hey Jim, uh, this is Mark. I think you're the one that left a note on my uh, my car uh, this morning. Hmm. Just give me a buzz. And that didn't even happen in September. Okay, I'm gonna give up on this. Like, I'm, I'm way down on the bottom of the list. Fuck it, you know, fuck it.
There are some people without a phone. That's weird. Frank and Donna. That sounds good. Except nobody's home. The number you... I need to copy Duck Prunt's Duck Hunt's idea. He says, uh, what if shooting stars were actually astronaut poop dropped from the ISS burning when entering in the, uh, the atmosphere? It's totally possible. I think that's probably real. But, you know, I could use that. And, you know, I, I could, I mean, if they say, you don't drop your poop, I'm like, what do you think shooting stars are? Fucking idiot. Some people. The number you have... No, I think I just called that. <laughs> uh, no, never mind. I wanted to call this one just because it's, uh, it's, a, it's a lady named Mrs. Cotton. But I hate calling the ones where there's no husband's name because it's probably some widow lady. She'll start talking to me about her husband, and I'll have to feel bad. We don't want that. She'll, she'll bring down our high, ruin the show. So I'm not calling Mrs. Cotton. Doug's not there. Fucking Doug. You've reached Doug at the sound of the tone. Leave a message and I'll call you back as soon as possible. Thank you. Larry. That's an awesome name. I thought this would be a pretty good list because it's a it's a really big church directory. It's like a huge church in a big city. And the directory is, you know, it's got like pictures of all the people and stuff. And there's a pretty good mix of old people, young people, families. You know, it's not just a bunch of old people at the church like it usually is. It's actually young people too. And you know, like old people, they're not even going to know what space is. I'll be like, space? What's that? They didn't have space when they were kids. Ugh. Hard to copy and paste. All right, here we go. Let's try Joel. The number you have dialed Fuck. is not in service. Fucking Joel.
I don't know why, but on this PDF, I'm having a really hard time copying and pasting to my phone. I don't know why. It's usually not this bad. Maybe I just need to reboot. You have reached 973. Damn it. But it's okay. Oh, no. No, fuck that. Hold on. I'm just going to move on to the next one. We're on page two. We're just now starting the bees. Holy shit, this is a huge directory. Wow. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number and try your call again. We're sorry. This person is dead. Please hang up and give a moment of silence. Message PLA. Good times. Yep. Motherfucker. I'm going to have to reboot. This is insane. Okay, I'm just going to type it in manually. That'll be faster. The number you have dialed is not in service. Oh shit, that's a work number. Well, maybe he'll be at work. I don't know. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message. Wow, their anniversary was in 1978. It's crazy. I don't know, you guys. Like, if, if stuff doesn't start happening soon, I'll move to businesses, maybe. I don't know. Seems like we're not getting very good answers on this list today. Need to call them on Sunday, right after church. That's what I gotta do. Everyone's dead. Alright, page three. We're actually on the D's now. Holy shit. Hello? Oh, hello, Tom. Yes? Hey, Tom. Uh, this is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station up in space. Okay. And um, I, are you home right now by chance? No, I'm out walking right now. Oh, <laughs> nobody's night. home today. Like, are you near home? Could you run home real quick? No. Why not? No, I'm quite a... What do you mean? Well, are you running? Are you walking? What are you doing? Who is this? Uh, my name is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the space station. I'm quite a bit, quite a ways right now. <laughs> oh. Well, what are you doing? What, what exactly are you doing? I'm not real comfortable with this conversation. Well, I mean, I'm a lieutenant. I'm up in space. You can tell me anything. Who am I going to tell? I'm in space. Well, all right. Well, I um, appreciate your call. Thank okay. you. You, just, you don't have to be a dick about it. Oh, he didn't hear that. 
how is nobody home? It's it's Saturday. Everyone's home on Saturday. But his wife's home. I gotta call her. Stay tuned, everyone. XYZ is next. This will all be over. Hello? Hi, uh, Stacy? Uh, no, this is her daughter-in-law. Can I help you? Oh, or, hey. or, or give her a message or whatever? Well, I, I'm actually calling for anyone that's at the house. Um, my name is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling from the International Space Station up in space. This is not her number anymore. This oh. is my number. Well, are you on Abbey Court? Uh, no, I'm not. Ah, I'm in a. They have dropped this number, and it's my number now. Th- did they like make you? Never mind. I'm not gonna say that. Okay. Well, I guess I'll just try her at the other three numbers I have for her. That's fine. Okay. I will. Just watch. Bye now. Okay. I hope you have a nice day. I gotta get back to my. Okay. <laughs> get back to my space stuff. Hey, where'd my my sound effects? Oh, they're they're right there. Yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Did they make you move into a retirement? Did they put you in a home, lady? I can't do that. What, what was I thinking? What's wrong with me? Yeah, they stole her house. Stole her house and put her in a home. Poor lady. You need shit for me. I probably should turn off the Star Trek stuff because, I don't know, it seems like pretty much anyone might recognize that. And they totally wouldn't believe me that I'm calling them from space. That'd be terrible. I need to switch to the next generation bridge. Beep, beep, boop. This guy's name is Percy. He is- Hi, this is Percival. It's that oh. time of year again. I'm kind of busy. So if you leave your name and your telephone number, I'll get back with you. If you don't leave your name and your telephone number, I won't get back with you. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense to me. He has, a, he has a son, though, named Percival Jr. I don't know. It's such a weird name. Just funny that they named their kid that, too. I'm going to have to um, maybe take a break and get a homeowner's directory, maybe. Because this one just, I don't know. I thought this one would be awesome. But it's crap. And I have been doing an hour now. I think it's time for a break. Not that I deserve a break, because holy shit, this show. Hello. So I, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to finish up this page. It's like another, I don't know, five numbers or so. I mean, five five listings. Yeah, literally, if you know what Hello. I mean. Hello, Jim? Yeah. 
Hey, this is Lieutenant Tuck, Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station. You know, up in space. I'm not interested. Thank you. No, no I'm, I'm. God damn it, Jim. He said he's not interested. I don't know if you guys could hear that over my space noises. I need to turn those down a bit. <laughs> space telemarketing. Hello. We are not available. Fucking Jim. Hello, Mark? Yes. Hey, Mark. Um, this is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station up in space. Okay. And um, are, are you by chance home right now? Uh, no, not right now. <sighs> We're at a friend's house. Darn it. W- what's his address? Because we can move over a little bit. Uh, I was hoping to lower a bucket down. We're kind of running low on uh, Pepsi's. And if I if I lower a bucket down from the space station, do you think you could put Pepsi's in it? Or I'm not going <laughs> to ask funny. for beer, but if you have a few, <laughs> that's awesome. I'm actually completely serious, sir. <laughs> you know? Yeah, there's no Pepsi's here. Beer, orange juice. No, no beer either. Water. You know, we have to drink our own pee up here. <laughs> Water would be nice. You just fill up <laughs> some, awesome. fill up a container. I don't know. <laughs> You're not willing to help a brother out? No, not today. Fuck. It's funny, though. Fuck. It's not supposed <laughs> to be funny. It's supposed to give us beer. Pepsi. <laughs> I'm hanging up. Whatever. Enjoy right, your fun care. life there and on <laughs> Earth and stuff where you have right, plenty to care, drink. Bro. You don't have to drink your own pee. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I'm gonna, we're going to empty the toilet right above your house. Since you're being kind of a dick. It sounds, sounds great. So yeah, yeah. It, you'll think it sounds real great when you get home and there's a giant lump of poo in your backyard. <laughs> you think I'm kidding, but like when you get home, look in your backyard. Yeah, this this directory, it's it's definitely got to go. I've had it with this directory. I, I have um, I have more than I thought. I have like four left on this page. Let's uh, quickly listen to their answering machines, and then we will we will take a break. <laughs> Jim Bob says, uh, "Space Station Upper Decker." Hello? Oh, hello, uh, Krista. Yes. Hey, uh, this is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station up in space. We're like right above your house right now. Okay. And um, I was wondering, are 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 you home right now? Are, are you still That's there? A really on? awkward question. Well, uh, uh, we we wanted to try an experiment. If if you don't mind, do you think you could just go out in your backyard real quick? We're gonna we're gonna drop something down there. No. Well, I mean, you don't have to go in the backyard. In fact, I wouldn't go in the backyard. If you could just stand at the door, and we're we're gonna I'm gonna drop I'm gonna drop a thing out the window from the space station up here, <laughs> and I'm gonna That's see. That's funny. It's like a prank call, right? That's n- terrible. N- no, it's not a prank it's call. Yeah, it totally is. Yeah, no, it's not. Look, look. <sighs> I'm, I'm calling you from space. L- look on the, the live space station NASA channel. You'll see me on the phone. Yeah, you want me to turn on the NASA channel? Yeah, turn on the NASA channel. Like you, know, you know what? Turn, turn on the NASA channel, and is what I'm going to do. When you, when you turn it on, I'm going to flip you off, and that way you'll know it's me. <laughs> then you'll see. How come I can't hear you now? He'd like, he'd like me to go. He'd like me to go outside and... He's going to drop some in from outer space. Who are you talking to, ma'am? My husband. Oh. Can you tell him to shut the fuck up because you're on the phone? Who is it? I don't know. (laughs) Hey, Steve. Steve. I'm going to try an experiment. I don't know your name. I don't know. He's an astronaut from outer space. Lieutenant. I'm Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton, Steve. We're going to try something real quick. Home. Where are you? Driving. Oh, okay. Well, I guess you can't even do it. Why didn't you just tell me that in the first place, Chris? To God. Never asked. What? Never asked. What? Never mind. Well, you're on speaker. Okay, it's not, not like we can hear you or anything. Hello? Hello, Frank? 
Yeah. Hey, Frank. It's Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station. From where? I, I'm calling you from space, from the International Space Station. We're pretty much right above your house right now. We're flying over. Really? Uh, uh, I'm in Nebraska. Oh, you're not in Alabama today? No, I'm a long haul truck driver. Oh, I see. Okay, well, that, darn it. We were going to try a quick experiment. We were going to drop something out the window and see if we could make it land on your roof. Just, just for science, you know? What's that? We were going to drop something out the window and see if we could make it land on your roof. But if you're not I home... Have no idea who, I have no idea who you are. Oh, no, I'm... you're calling from an Alabama number. Right, yeah, we, we uh, you know, it's like, it's it's a relay from NASA, the phone connection. I'm calling from the International Space Station. This is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. We were, we, we just, uh, we call random people in the country and do experiments with them, but we didn't know you'd be in Nebraska, because we're right on top of uh, Alabama right now. Why don't you call 9-7, that's my wife, she's home. Oh, okay, yeah, we'll do the experiment with her, if you know what I mean. Well, uh, if, if you hit her, it's going to cost you. Oh, no, we won't hit her. Don't worry. Everything's fine. It's totally safe. We're going to drop a rope ladder after, and we're going to come down and pick it up. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> okay. I got to call her quick. Because she's home. And you know he's... Hello. Hi, Jan. Yes. Hey, Jan. This is uh, L- Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling from the International Space Station up in space. We're we're pretty much right above your house right now. Yeah. And I was wondering if you could help us out real quick with a, an experiment. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna lower a bucket from the International Space Station out the window. Yeah. So, so you're gonna see it come out of the sky just a. <clears throat> a bucket on a rope. Yeah. And we're trying to see it's we're trying to see if um if if we can pull cargo back up up into the space station from down there. So do you think you could just yeah. put a couple sodas in there? Yeah. Or or water. No problem. You know, juice, beer, whatever. It, it's just an experiment. It's for the weight. But we are gonna drink okay. them. Okay. We're still gonna drink them. I mean unless you want to okay. Or, or like, do you have a problem with this? Because if if you know if it's the money, we we can pool our money together and, and lo- no. lower some you know dollar bills down with it. No, it's not the money. Or no, you're not going to do it. I think this is a funny joke. Why? What are you talking about? It's not a joke. I'm I'm really calling you from the International Space Station. Uh, we just had NASA relay the call in to you. That's why it's shown up as a local number. And we're just we, we do we do. <laughs> you go ahead. You lower your bucket. I'll be outside waiting. Okay, we're going in the backyard. All right. And it's going to be hard to see until it gets really close. So just keep watching the sky, and you're, you're going to see a bucket lower down from a rope. Yeah. A two hundred mile long rope. Yeah. And um, what what do you have to drink there? Like what kind of food, snacks, top ramen, anything? Like if you could just fill it's a small bucket. It's gonna be a small orange bucket. Like one of those um, right. one of those Home Depot buckets. Yeah. Yep. And if you could just throw some snacks, sodas, beers, anything. Sure. And do you want us to put like a twenty dollar bill? I'll I'll round up the other astronauts, we'll all put five bucks in. No, nope. I just wanna see this yellow this orange bucket. It's gonna be orange. All right. It could be yellow by the time it gets there, you know. But uh, we're, mm. we're okay. We're lowering it down right now. Go on out there and um, do, can you get some stuff together real quick though first before you go out? Oh sure. Because we only no ha- we only have so much time before uh, th- you know it just gets swept away because we're gonna be in in over Russia next probably. All right. Go straight to Russia from there. We better hurry. Okay, you know you better hurry. We're lowering it. Hurry up. Get out there. Okay. I'm out here. All right. Just, just keep watching. Keep looking. It'll be within five minutes, okay? All right. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. It's for science. Sure. 
It really is. Okay. I don't know why you don't believe me. Nope, I have a hard time with that. Okay, I gotta, I gotta hang up because I gotta help them lower it out. We're all working as a team here and lowering it out, and they're, they're like glaring all at right. me. They're glaring at me. I have to help. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, so, so hang it. Okay, she hung up. They all seem to know it's a joke. All my pranks anymore. Like, they're all just completely unbelievable. You know, telling people I miniaturized myself inside their body. So, um, what we're going to do now, we're going to take a break. Everyone, uh, synchronized, synchronized urinating. So, uh, three, two, one, go. We're going to do that right now. I'll be back in about 10 minutes. I'm going to get another directory ready. And I'm not going to do very long, though, because I have stuff to do today. But I want to try a different directory because I'm sick of this one. It's a piece of garbage. <laughs> Damn it. it looks great up here. Stand by. Just don't flush your pee out the window. That's gross. Okay. On top of people's roofs. Uh, JD, he says um, the ISS is actually over Australia right now. That's pretty awesome. Be calling Australia. I bet you Jan, she's gonna look it up. What? They're not over my house. You guys, right now, Jan is in her backyard looking at the sky. Just think about that while you listen to the song. Hey, it's Crazy Calvin. Just letting you know that I just got been spending $150 on a Bluetooth head unit for my car. Solely so I can listen to the uh, Cacti radio stream during road trip. Yeah, uh, Cactus, Cactus. Is it really just for Cacti Radio? Wait, what are you talking about? There is no Cacti Radio anymore. Or I guess there is sort of. The Shoutcast still has Cacti Radio in the URL. That's probably what you mean. But you better keep your word on that. Don't be listening to any other shows. No Madhouse, no Jag TV, no Dwight. Just me. Uh, howdy, Brad. I was wondering if you uh, ever signed up for that... Uh international calling thing i remember like nah i remember you talking about it earlier in the year no i didn't you're imagining it you said you you might sign up for the international call so that nah. it was only like ten dollars a month but i was wondering if you ever actually did that that's a lot of money uh, bye. Yeah, no, I haven't done that. I did do one international call during Ding Timber, or I attempted to. I can't remember if he picked up, but I just switched over to Google Voice, used my international calling on that. It's probably a horrible deal. It's probably like 50 cents a minute, but I tried. If I ever feel like I need to make a ton of international calls, I'll definitely do that. Hey, Brad. You know me, I don't like foreign. And this Dude. is your cousin Gross. Carter. I I just wanted to know, were you sending me that cactus yep. for my birthday? I'll be doing it's, that. It's coming up pretty soon. I okay. ain't heard from you in a while. Thanks, cousin also, Carter. Bye. You know our our old buddy Larry, man. He he needs some bond money. Oh shit! He, he I'm gonna run morning. right out to the jail. I'll get him right out of there. Hey, Brad. Cousin Carter. How you doing, Brad? Great. I love you. Wow. Voicemails are great today, you guys. And just think, there's only 43 of them left. We're practically finished already. Uh, just so you guys know, the show has not ended yet. This is a mid-show break. So if you skip ahead, maybe, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, you can just skip these voicemails. I usually put them on the end. But the live show was kind of long, so I just split it up. Dearest Brad, it's Corbin Guy Jr. Just calling in to see how you're doing. Yeah, that goes on for a while. I can barely understand him, but I think he said he's Corbin Guy Jr. Did you know you had a son, Corbin Guy, and he's calling into the show? What a coincidence. Yeah, this is a guy in California. Um, you have my sympathies. I found out that you have to pay a ridiculous amount of money for... More like you guys just have to keep supporting the show so I can pay the fine. A That's how it works. prank call. Yep. Uh... I'm never shopping at Safeway, and oh, all, come on. everybody in Oregon who is involved uh, can sit on a tack. What? Um, goodbye. Okay. I was just at Safeway this morning getting groceries. I shop there all the time. Actually, shit, am I allowed to go in Safeway? I don't even know. They didn't say I wasn't allowed to. Hey, Brad, it's a uh, user fan with PH. Um, just wanted to point out for everybody... I can't believe, like, um, I, you know, we got Mr. Potato Head, Mr. Tomato Head. Why hasn't any user come on and been like, Hey, Brad, this is user fan with an F. 
There, I just gave everyone a great idea to fuck with user fan with the PH. Here's the most important. Sorry, user fan with the PH. Thing that we learned this year's digging timber, which was pretty good. You know, give yourself some credit for um, for making something work. That yeah, I, I actually enjoyed it better this year than I did last year. But like I said, I get bored doing the same prank for an entire month. Most didn't work. Um, but most important thing that we all learned: people from Chicago are dicks. Yeah, yep. they are. See ya. Oh, you mean the listeners. I was thinking the people that were leaving me horrible messages. But yeah, listener in Chicago, quit being a dick. Uh, hey, Brad, how you doing? It's hey. Corbin guy. Hey, Corbin. Uh, I was just calling. Hope you're doing well. Hope yep. everything's a-okay. Up, up on the level. Anyhow, More or less. Uh, hey, I uh, got this hot idea. What, what about just calling up random people out of the phone book and just shushing them? Call someone up and shh. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually, I, I want to do that right now. And I don't have time to sit here and do prank calls. I'm trying to get through the voicemails, but. Hello? Uh, shh. Hey, shh, shh. I'm on the phone. Shh. Hello? Uh, hey, ma'am. Shh. Shh. Shush. Who are you calling? I'm calling you, but be quiet. I'm on the phone. Shh. All right, she shushed. It worked. Only took four calls to get someone to pick up. Here, let me try one more. That was supposed to be a guy named Brian. I don't know who that lady was. Hello? Shh. Quiet. Shh. Well, okay, someone's got her trained well. Okay, one more. Corbin guy hijacking my show like this. Just trying to do the voicemails. And you're insisting that I do this dumb idea. Lou Jordan. Hey, Lou, shh, I'm on the phone, shh. Hello. Hey, Lou, can you hear me? Yes. Shh, I'm, be quiet, please, shh, shush. Shh. For what? Just, just, shh, shh. Shh. For my car? No, no, listen, shh, be quiet, shh. Okay. Damn it, Lou. On the phone. Shh. Shh. <clears throat> <sighs> What's up? Oh, shh. Lou, shh. Busy, shh. Shush. <coughs> Lou, be quiet. You're making noise. Shh. Hello, Lou? Lou? You gotta be quiet. Shh. Shut up. Just shut up. Shh. Shh. Typing. Jeez. Okay. Hey, Lou? I'm here now. Lou? Lou? 
Hello. Yes. Hey, this is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station. Sorry, I had to send an email. To who? Uh, my daughter. It's not, but, but it really, it's none of your business. Don't be nosy. Come on. Ah, there goes Lou. He finally got bored with listening to me typing. Thank God. That was like five minutes long. I don't even know if I'm going to leave that in there. Fucking Corbin guy. What the hell? Yeah, yeah. I get it, Corbin guy. Thank you. I resumed Corbin guy's voicemail and he was still shushing me. What the hell? Hey, Brad Carter. I'm Dr. Smooth Rod here. Hey, Dr. Smooth Rod. <clears throat> just actually just called in just to hear your new, uh, your new voicemail greeting. Yep. Recorded. It was the talk of the town. It's much better now, it's isn't it? 405. So I had to check that shit out, and yeah, it sure is different stuff. Anyway, man, uh, <laughs> it was worth yeah, the call, right? <coughs> He's being like me, like coughing into the phone. If I would have said anything, he probably would have shushed me. Looks like I have about a half a billion messages from Greg T. Let's listen to the shortest one. Hey, Brad, for some reason my phone's only on 50% charge. Oh, no. Fuck. I'm about to charge it Fuck. I'm about to charge it soon. That sucks, But anyhow. Greg. Bummer. Yeah, this sucks again. Yeah, you I know. You know when you call people, it really sucks when you forget shit. I totally agree. I bet you you do that a lot. Yep. It'd be great. Yep. If you could record, have a whole episodes of where you forget what to say and you hang up, I'd love to hear it. Bye. I don't want anyone to hear that. I only play the prank calls where I win the prank. Maybe I should make a, another podcast called Brad Carter Sucks at Prank Calls. And it'll just be people hanging up on me and telling me I'm stupid. Hello, I'm calling from Randallstone Walmart Photos. Hey, Roy. It's Steve fucking, I mean, Falcon. Anyways, so I heard you that you recently mentioned Malcolm in the Middle. And funny thing is, I was actually watching... Malcolm. Hey, you know, weirdest thing, sorry to interrupt you, but remember, I was going on about that stupid phone ringing sound that I always hear in 90s shows, and I was watching an episode of Sliders today, don't ask why I was showing somebody Sliders, they wanted to see Sliders, and I heard that same 90s phone ringing, same one from Malcolm in the Middle, and Drew Carey, and others that I can't remember, Eminem album, it was in there, I'm pretty sure, whatever, I don't know why I'm telling you this, I'll play your In the Middle on Netflix, I was binge watching it, and then the next day I go to watch it, and those motherfuckers took down the whole series. I mean, like, Aww. seriously, why the fuck That's does sad. Netflix do that? It's been on there forever, off. though. It's okay. But anyway, the other thing is, um, there was a wait, there was a card game that you did. Probably you a were Disney a show. And I thought that was hilarious because I'm actually like a professional magician. Of course. So, <laughs> it was pretty cool. I, I, I need to guessed. figure out how I can actually remove a ding from somebody's car and like put it on somebody else. Oh, you got to put it in your fist. And then wave your hand over your fist, and then open up your fist, and the ding is repaired. That's how you do it. If you were a real magician, you would know that. that. Would be hilarious. Oh, yeah, last thing is, okay, this might be a little weird, but every voicemail I leave that you play, like, I, I take a timestamp of it, and I put it in a pages document so what? I can listen to it later and masturbate. Wait, what? And, really? Yeah, I don't know if anybody else does that, but... What? Yeah, you should totally say it because I feel like a fucking weirdo for that. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, sure anyway, you are. You're masturbation. Total fucking weirdo, <laughs> Steve Falcon. Did he say he only does the ones with his voicemail or everyone's voicemail? Like he's making a document file on all of you. He's like keeping records on everyone in this show. He's one of those identity thieves, is what he is. That's Nico. I'm calling today because um, I listened to the last show, and I think you might have misunderstood last a little show bit. Ever. Um, I was talking about the episode numbers and um, the dates. Um, yeah, I was probably I totally high. That's all. The date. Um, but I also, I'm not saying get rid of the episode numbers. I'm saying, um, have Add the date the on to the episode number. No, I understood that. It's just like, if I put the date up there, it's just a big mess of text and it makes the text run off the page and they can't see the show title. Maybe I should put the date on the end or something. And cause it's just easier. Maybe. Like, I can pay attention to if I, you know, if I've been away from the computer I can go, Oh yeah, that was mid mid October that I last time I listened to something so I kind of go back that way and it's easier to find it for Maybe me. Maybe I should label them like mid October instead of actual it. dates. Um so 
anybody else thinks that I'm trying to get rid of the episode numbers, not the case. Uh, I know a lot of people like them. Anyways, talk to you later. Hope I you have a good them. day. Bye. You guys are making me like do weird things with episode 404 and 420. It's a whole new thing I have to deal with now. I should just switch back to the dates. Hey, RBCP. I wanted to put a quick request out for this month of October to hear some Jack Heliquin, specifically his uh, 90s Marilyn Manson Snow Push Show intro. Yeah, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm writing that in the notes right now, so you should have heard that on the intro today. I'm playing Jack Heliquin's intro thing, the Nine Inch Nails, whatever. I didn't even know that was a Nine Inch Nails parody or inspired by Nine Inch Nails. I don't know anything, but it's in the show notes now. I'm definitely going to do that. Thanks for the intro today, Jack Heliquin. Um, oh, and his um, Lord, Lord, Lord outro. It's amazing. Yeah, we'll see about uh, that. Yeah, that's it. All right. I'm not doing both of them. Yeah. Bye. Hey, Brad. It's Infected. Hey, Infected. Um, I sent you an email for a Dictem- yeah, a Dingtember poem reading that I did. Oh, yeah. Uh, I completely I forgot this. about it. And I was clearing out my, my documents folder, and, and I found it. And I, at first, didn't think it was finished, but it is. Yay. So I was hoping that you'd read it before, you know, Dig Timber is Wait, is what? Done. I have to read it? Thank you. Maybe I didn't get your first email. I, you know, like I said, I've been just terrible about emails. But I'm going to turn that all around. Any day now, the emails are going to be awesome. But yeah, I got this email uh, 10 days ago on October 12th. And Infected actually uh, wrote a poem for Ding Timber, and I haven't listened to it yet, but he sent me an MP3 of him reading the poem, and I guess I was supposed to read the poem during Ding Timber. Sorry, but here it is. Here is Infected's poem. A cautionary Ding. tale I intend to tell about a master of worry named Roy Gerbel. He's unfeeling and cruel, a jerk nonetheless, only determined to laugh on his prank-calling quest. How do I know this? What is my deal? I've been a victim. I assure you, all that happened is 100% real. On the 3rd of September, I drove down to my local Kmart in my BMW. After shopping, I returned to my car. I noticed something flapping on my windshield from afar. Taking the paper, I read it and began to cry. My BMW? Damaged by some guy? My distress turned to anger as I gave the car a look. I started to put these into a mental book. The first thing on the car I did see, a scratch on my bumper. Probably done with a key. Then I noticed the chip of paint on my door. Next, the coffee cup staining my floor. I don't do oh. that much to one... Si- oh, I'm sorry. I'm interrupting your boy. Boy, you make me sick. Not just damaging my car, but trashing it? You horrible prick. I looked at the note and called up the guy. When he answered, it sounded like he was high in the sky. Uh-uh. Roy, I started. This is Paul Shart. I am the guy whose car you hit at the Kmart. I see where you keyed my bumper, the chip on my door, and that coffee cup you threw on my floor. Roy denied doing any of that. What did he think? I was dumb as bird's gat? He said he didn't do the things that I said. Instead, he said the things that I dread. I changed my kid on the hood of your car, hotwired your vehicle to go to the bar. I posted an ad for your car on Craigslist, used your gloves box to take a quick piss, walked on your roof replacing your panels, set up your car to get 100 TV channels. I also siphoned your gas and put maple syrup in your windshield wipers. Oh, and I took a shirt from your vehicle to use as a diaper. I was angered and confused. Was this all some elaborate ruse? Are you serious, Roy? Of course. Why would I lie? Maybe because you're just a horrible guy? Roy did scoff. More matter of fact. I was just kidding. I didn't do any of that. Somewhat relieved, but still pissed. What was the point of all of this? Just for the lulz, sir. It's what I do. Well, you, sir, are a jerk and you've wasted my time. Go do something else with your miserable life. With that, I hung up on this scumbag. Almost giving me a heart attack just for a laugh? This guy is nuts. He must be on crack. So if you see a note on your vehicle this September, please, oh listener, just remember, it may not be true. It might just be this phone loser prank calling you. That was pretty great, Infected. I think you deserve a little bit of applause, at least. Thanks. I'm going to save this. I'm going to put it, like, I'm going to save the MP3 and put it in my Snowplow show directory. And maybe, if all goes well, I'll remember to play that next Ding Timber. If we do Ding Timber, that is. We'll see. Hey, Brad. Um, Mr. Tomato Head. Uh, two things. One, I want to say, uh, regardless what anybody says, voicemails are awesome. Thanks. I love them. That's just part of the show. Yep. Uh, the show too. wouldn't be the same without them. Uh, number two on uh, episode four hundred one, the at the 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 guy at the eighteen minute mark that you were accusing of being high and smoking crack oh, and everything. Yeah. That guy. 
when he went through his litany of I'm not high, I don't smoke, I don't drink. Oh yeah, I actually do remember that guy. That guy was funny. That has an absolute great potential to be made into another Go Cup <laughs> song. Yeah. Uh, Come I know on, you listeners. Got listeners that can do that kind of stuff. Episode 401, 18 minute mark. I command you to put a song together. And that could be just that just drop it right in that Go Cup song. I'd love to hear it. Anybody that can do it, uh, you get uh, some high fives from me. Thanks. High fives from Tomato Head. Get to work, Reefer Badness. We need another song. Hey, Brad. This is, uh, this is uh, Bandit Mill Stripper here. And this is in regards to episode 403, which you uh, played the song by Pillow Man. And I guess. I just had to laugh. I just Did I? Here. But the Pillow Man was a, was a pornography from the late 90s. Starring uh, <sighs> pornographer Peter North. I can't understand what you're saying. And, um, something actually, about Peter North being in a porno, I think. I, like, I think I borrowed a copy of it from a friend because that was back when we still kept pornos around on VHS or whatever. What? VHS. Who did that? And uh, <laughs> borrowed it from a friend, and another friend started making fun of me after that. And from then on, he both said, Hey, Bill O'Man, what's up? And so I. I was called jokingly called Pillow Man. So, hearing hearing the name of that of your uh, listener, Pillow Man, just brought back those memories. Yeah, He's, wanted, P- Pillow Man's probably a huge porn freak. That's all. Just like us. Pillow Man is an actual uh, pornographic video. You could probably watch it on one of the free sites. I Who don't knows? Know. I assume I don't watch pornography anymore. I'm yeah, right. Now. Uh, You're like that guy. Take care. Guys, like I don't do drugs. I don't take crack. I don't drink, I don't smoke. You're just like him. I don't watch pornography. Hey, Brad. I was listening to uh, episode 399, and mm-hmm. I was listening to the later part of the show when you were talking about uh, the Christine calls. Yeah. And uh, Maybe. I uh, I noticed that you said you, you could didn't be know making what it up. the car was. Well, seeing how I'm... Oh, yeah. I like well, that's the what you're talking Christine. about. And stuff like that. I wanted to tell you that uh, it's a 1958 Plymouth Fury. You don't say. In the movie. And uh, yeah, now you know. Yay. It's a 1958 Plymouth Fury. I'm... By the way, this is Ryan from Kentucky. Hey, Ryan. So, Thanks for making me smarter. Letting you know. With movie knowledge. Right, bye. Bye. I think I read they're doing a remake of Christine, which would be awesome. I would love to see a new version of Christine. Hey, Brad. Mob 7. Hey, Mob uh, 7. I got a joke for you. Um, so, how do trains listen to stuff? I don't oh, know. Oh, with their engine. Oh, <laughs> Ah, what the fuck? I think Mob 7's dead now, or he hates me. I'm not sure, but I'm all shooken up now. I'm going to stop doing voicemails. But I'm going to read a, an email or two here, not a whole bunch. But we've got one in here from September 30th, and uh, Joe King says, I was too much of a hobo to call the voice line, so please use this MP3 instead. That's pretty weird, so here's an MP3 of a voicemail, I guess. Hey Brad, uh, listen, I was turning around in your driveway last night, and I accidentally dinged your lawn. Uh, I know, I'm sorry, I forgot to leave a note. Weird. I wasn't aware that I had a lawn. I know that you'll forgive me. Um, As far as damages go, you know... I'm kind of broke, so... I mean, what the hell? I was going to stop playing voicemails, and I go to the emails, and he's making me play a voicemail in the emails. This is anarchy. Can't really pay you there, but I know that your your Patreon folks will help pay for it. I so. hope so. They better. Sorry. It's okay. Oh, and also, you know, I did get I out and assess you. the situation. I'm just excited and, to have a lawn. Uh, I didn't know I had a yeah, lawn. Yeah, you may want to get your lawn looked at, because I think that there's I don't have, a I don't hidden have trees. I don't have anything. In your grass. I live in crappy somewhere. apartments. Okay, Brad. Have a good day. Mr. Pickles out. Oh, holy shit. It's Mr. Pickles. I should have realized that was Mr. Pickles. Because everyone knows Mr. Pickles' voice. He's the guy that made us this awesome Patreon commercial. Hello to all you Snowplow Show listeners. Mr. Pickles here from the Slug Plug Podcast. (laughs) Reminding everyone to make a small monthly donation to the Snowplow Show's Patreon page. Patreon page. Patreon page. Patreon page. Yep. Good old Mr. Pickles. Thanks for the email slash voicemail slash email, Mr. Pickles. Uh, one other one in here. It's a more recent one. This is from uh, Retina. 
And it says, throughout my time listening to your show, you've mentioned some podcasts you have listened to that aren't prank calls. I particularly enjoyed the one where they go to India to meet the scammer boss. So I'm wondering, what podcasts do you listen to that don't involve prank calls? And I listen to quite a few podcasts. I listen to uh, Harmon Town. That's the one with Dan Harmon, the guy that does Rick and Morty and Community and, you know, those things. That's one of my favorite podcasts. It's a lot of fun, except the last two episodes, because they lost their venue. Like, they got shut down by the fire marshal or something, and I think they're working to try and fix that, because they did a live show in front of an audience, and now they're just sitting in a room, and it sounds really boring without the laugh track. That one is called Harmon Town. It's HarmonTown.com. It's one of those subscription podcasts. I subscribe to it so I can watch the videos or more like I subscribe to it for a few months and then I unsubscribe to it and then I resubscribe to it and watch all the videos that I missed. See, I'm not awesome like you guys supporting my show. I'm kind of an asshole with my subscriptions to podcasts. I cheat. I also listen to something called the Duncan Trussell Family Hour, which I mostly listen to just for his opening monologues. They're really funny, but then he interviews people, which I'm just like, uh, okay, bunch of hippies, I don't really care, and I start forwarding through the whole thing, waiting for Duncan Trussell to just talk to us some more. I've been listening to The Dick Show a lot this past year, thanks to one of my listeners who introduced me and Dick to each other. Wow, that sounded weird. I listened to uh, Mark Marin and Manic Mondays, that's a you know funny music podcast, it's a really short one. Actually, I hardly ever listen to that one, but occasionally I'll listen to an episode or two. There's Futility Closet. That's just a bunch of weird stories about history and stuff. And I listen to Radio Lab. That's a NPR show, I think. They do a lot of really cool, fun things and stories and stuff, so everybody should listen to Radio Lab. I listen to the Cracked podcast sometimes, only when it's like something that interests me. I don't listen to every episode because a lot of them are pretty boring. Just because the topics don't interest me, not because they're actually boring. And, uh, oh yeah, Distorted View Daily. You guys know I listen to that one over at distortedview.com. That's a fun one to listen to if you're not too easily offended. And I am. I'm always writing angry letters to Timmy Boo and telling him to tone it down a bit. With all the racism and pornography and stuff, he never replies to me, though. I don't know why. He's kind of like me. He doesn't care about his listeners. He doesn't respond to emails. Uh, Mysterious Universe. That's one I've listened to for over 10 years now. Kind of like an Art Bell type show with aliens and Bigfoot and conspiracies and boring interviews. And I always like to clarify, I don't believe in ghosts and aliens and all that stuff. I just think it's fun to listen to. I think those are the main ones in my download directory. But I'm just going to list through every podcast I have in here. Well, not every one. But anyway, okay, Ear Biscuits. I don't really like Ear Biscuits that much, but I listen, you know, maybe once or twice a year. And I usually quit before it's over. I listen to The Thump sometimes. Well, actually, very rarely. It's been over a year since I listened to that. Uh, call Chelsea Peretti. Once I had you guys do a phone mob to her show, she takes a lot of call-ins. And you guys, you know, did a bunch of weird cactus stuff at her. And she just erased it all out of the show. But it was funny to listen to it live. She was kind of annoyed with us. Uh, Welcome to Night Vale. I used to be into that. I don't really listen to that anymore. Star Talk with Neil deGrasse Tyson. It's all right, I guess. Comedy Bang Bangs, Smodcast, Jay and Silent Bob Get Old. You know, all the Kevin Smith stuff. I'll listen to that every once in a while. The TED Radio Hour. That's something I subscribed to recently. I only heard a couple episodes, but it's been pretty good so far. Uh, holy shit, this is going to take forever. Okay, the Big Beef Wino Show. That's a piece of shit. Nobody should listen to that. The Flopcast. The Comedy Button. Norm McDonald Live. I don't know why I listen to that or watch that, but sometimes I do. Uh, I've got a Gilbert Godfrey's Amazing Colossal Podcast. I was into him a few years ago. I listened to every episode, but now I'm bored with it. I really should just delete it. Uh, Serial. I listened to season one of Serial and then never again. It was fun, though. There's Polly Shore. There's Prank Call Nation. The Gray Noise Podcast. I don't even know what that is. The Best Debate in the Universe. That's Maddox's old podcast that I listened to a really long time ago and then kind of forgot about until I started listening to The Dick Show. We've got MC Hawking's Podcore Nerdcast. I listened to one episode of that. It was pretty boring. I have never gone back to it to see if it got any better. It probably has, though. That guy is pretty funny. Uh, Reply All. That's the one that, you know, they interviewed me a year or two ago. And recently they did some really extreme fucking with those uh, scam call centers in India. How did this get made? It's a movie podcast where they just make fun of really shitty movies. Uh, Getting Dug with High, uh, sometimes Coverville, King Falls AM. Holy shit, I have a lot of stuff in here. This Week in Tech, I never listened to that. Why is that in here? Waking Up with Sam Harris, he's fun to listen to sometimes. You guys are probably really bored listening to me list all my podcasts. And we've got the Snowplow Show here. We've got Madhouse Live. We've got the Bitterest Pill. We've got the Slug Plug Podcast with Mr. Pickles. 
and the Ricky Gervais podcast. I don't know which one it is. He's got a bunch of them. Control, Walt, Delete. I don't even know what that's about, but I like the title of it. So 2600, the Hacker Podcast, right where you are sitting now. That's a show by my good friend, Ken Eakins. Hey, Ken. And I don't know, that's about it. I think I probably missed a few of them in here. Like this one called Caller Go Ahead, where you just call into this voicemail line and they play your voicemail. They don't respond to them or anything, they just play them. It's weird. I haven't listened to that in years. They probably don't even make it anymore. Okay, I'm done listing podcasts. So I hope that answers your question. I hope that gives all of you guys something to listen to. Hopefully you won't find podcasts that are better than mine and just stop listening to me. Please don't do that. Holy shit, that took forever. This is going to be a long show. I better get back to the live show that happened yesterday. So here it is, the rest of the live show. I don't think I'm going to do an outro or anything. I'm just going to let the live show take care of that. So just a quick thank you to today's show sponsor, Scott. Scott is a supporter over on the Patreon, patreon.com slash phone losers. Please support the show. You will get extra shows for supporting the show. It's totally worth it. Not a scam at all. Okay, here is the live show. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Blind, jerking off to the eclipse. The sun was pulling cheap shots, doing commercial body tricks. Behind the back. Under the leg. I think he even did a head spin on the crossfader, a sound of what? Looked excellent. All of a sudden, it gets dim. Hello? Hello? Mrs. Hunter? No. Oh. Did I get the wrong number? Huh? Did I get the wrong number? No, you didn't get the wrong number. This a but you say Miss Hunter? Yeah, well whatever, Miss, Mrs. This what? her mother. What? This her mother. Oh, okay. Well, this is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from outer space. I'm I'm calling mm. from the I'm calling from the International Space Station. You know that one that's up there in space? I'm an astronaut. What kind of station? It's a space station. I'm an astronaut. I'm calling you from space. Oh, okay, you had to call them. You had to call them another time. Well, what are you doing? Are you busy? Yes, I am. Okay. Well, what are you busy doing? Watching TV? No, I'm doing something else. Which which thing are you doing? Why yes? Well, I'm I'm an astronaut, so it's okay to tell me. I, I'm just curious. Like, I, we're we're just trying to do an experiment real quick. Do you think you could go out in your backyard? We're just going to do something. No, I walk with a walk. I can't go outside. <sighs> we're going to turn the sky black. Maybe just sky like... Sky black? Yeah. Not yeah. here? Yeah, we're trying an experiment. We're right above your town right now. And we're, we're going to do some but, uh, magic space stuff. I cannot talk right now. What, why? What are you doing? I just can't talk right now. Okay, all right, don't. Just call me back later. You or or uh, the the other the hunters? They're not Ms. here. Well, you said you, but you said you're too busy. I don't know. This is so confusing. There's no one home right now. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, you just call back later. I will. Can you tell them I'll be calling? Tell them space is going to be calling. That was so boring. What do you guys think? Has this show totally sucked? Because, I don't know, I think like an hour and a half, I, I think I've been amused by maybe two calls that I've made. It's been a pretty sh- shitty show. Hi, Dwayne. Yes. Hey, Dwayne, this is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station out in space. We're, we're, uh, we're yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, no, I'm serious, sir. We're, we're flying right above your house right now. I, I've had this call patched in from NASA. That's why it shows up as a local number. And uh, we're, we're just try- yeah. trying to do some... Uh, what? What are you laughing about? <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead with what? Not, not if you're not going to take it seriously. This is science and space and stuff. If you're just going to laugh at our experiments, then fuck you, you know? Oh, you're really science there, huh? Yeah, yeah, the, the fuck word does exist within science, hey, exactly. believe it or not. You want to talk to somebody like that, I appreciate that. No, I'm, it's not that I'm talking to you like that, it, it's just, that's just how I talk, you know? Uh, how that's, uh, well, then you don't need to talk to me then. What, you never heard a curse word before? What are you, seven? Well, I've heard, I've heard a lot of them, but not on a, not on a phone call. What, what's this call about? You call my phone number. Well, I'm calling to do a, a quick experiment. Are you home right now, over there on Palm? Sure. Well, is that a yes or a no? Yes. Okay. Are you are you sure you're home? Because it sounds like you're full of shit. Good day. And, and we're on speakerphone all of a sudden. Why'd that happen? 
<laughs> I'm just giving up on the show, you guys. I don't even care anymore. Whatever. Um, hey, you know what I should do? Okay, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> Fuck directories. We're going to call... Um, I don't know. Give me a company, someone. Don't say that company. It's not going to be that company. But like... Um, I don't know, Starbucks maybe? Uh, you know, one of those places, 7-Eleven, Circle K. Where, where should I call? I, was, I just want to call businesses, and they got to be small businesses where it'll just be a couple people working, and they'll have a phone up front, not a McDonald's. <laughs> David Hilton says that NASA is the final boss. I'm, I'm leaning towards Starbucks, but... um. Yeah, yeah, fuck it. I'm I'm going to I'm going to start with Starbucks. Maybe you guys will think of something better. Yeah, the company that shall not be named. That's what it shall now be referred to as from this point forward. By the way, um like there's this new piece of equipment I have here, you guys. And it's from a listener. He he uh like on the day that I went to court, he sent me way too much money and he did this like, you know, when it first happened to um, I don't think he wants me to use his name. Uh, but, you know, I wanted to do something for the show that would be interesting and entertaining to him and everybody else. So I bought this cool piece of audio equipment that I meant to use today for space calls, but space calls have sucked so bad that I haven't had much time. So I bought this piece of equipment um, that hooks up to my microphone. I don't even know if it's hooked up right. I haven't messed around with it a whole lot. But it's, uh, it's a Roland VT3. And this is the kind of sound you hear when you're calling from space and, and you got a bad phone connection because of the, the link with NASA. <laughs> so it does a bunch of weird stuff like that. I thought that would be a lot of fun. It does, it does like auto-tune. Where's auto-tune? Auto-tune. <laughs> I can't talk. It does robot voices. We can do robot voices, you guys. I don't remember how to do robot voices. Um, how do I do robot voices? Robot voices. Where's the robot? Uh, not really. That's not a robot at all. But I can also, and I wasn't expecting this to work, you guys. The whole um, voice changing thing, because I've had. Pl why? Is, why am I echoing? Why is it like that? Hello. Okay, that's better. Uh, yeah, I didn't think the voice changer would work, but it actually. Um, Let me unbypass. It actually sounds not that bad, right? Doesn't this sound sort of female-ish? It's hard for me to hear myself. And then there's... You can make it go down like this. Sound like a, a kidnapper type person. Or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. So I think we'll have fun with this. Um, we didn't today, really. Or maybe we will with this next batch of numbers I'm going to call real quick. Uh, we have maybe a half hour left. I'm just going to do a few more of these and then get out of here. I have places to go. <laughs> you guys are apparently liking the sound effects. There, there's like... um. Ah, see, I haven't even played with it that much, so I don't know what all it does. <laughs> like, what the fuck is this? I don't think you guys could understand me before. I don't know what the fuck I can do with any of this stuff, but it could be fun. We'll have some fun with it. My favorite is the, the whole, you know, interference sounding thing. And I think I need to adjust it a little bit. But that totally sounds like space, right? Oh yeah, let me change my caller ID. I want to be from... Uh, Area code 321. The space area code. Somebody in the chat room was asking what the area code was for low-level orbit. thought that was a pretty great question. It's not 321. 321's Florida. I think that's where Cape Canaveral is, isn't it? Anyway, uh, okay. Let's, let's call a Starbucks from Cape Canaveral. I mean, the phone link's through Cape Canaveral. That's, that's all. Starbucks, this is Amber. How may I help you? Hi, Amber. Uh, this is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station. You know, up in space. Sorry, who is this? Uh, my name is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you 
uh, through a NASA phone link. I'm, I'm actually calling from space. I'm on the International Space Station. Very nice. Yep, and they're letting us do this thing today where we're going to get coffee. So we're going to, like, are you able to get on the roof by chance there at Starbucks? Uh, no. Darn. Thanks for calling, though. No, n- no, no, don't don't hang up. I, I'm, this is my only call. This is only my only chance to do this. Here, hold on. Just for a moment. All right. <laughs> I regret jumping off. She just hung up on me. She like, hold on while I hang up on you. But uh, I regret jumping. He's like, make her say over after each sentence. And that's a brilliant plan. I should start saying that to people. Just be like, sorry, <laughs> it's habit. They make us do that here in normal conversation. Because, you know, we're astronauts. That's how we talk. Starbucks, this is Russ. Get up to you. Hey, Russ. Uh, this is... Jesse, how can I help you? Oh, hey, Jesse. Hey, Russ picked up at the same time. That was weird. It's okay though. He hung up. He hung up. Russ is gone. It's Did cool. you want to talk to him? Oh uh, no, no. Uh, actually, I can talk to anyone. I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm calling you from the International Space Station. My name is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm up in space right now. Uh huh. And they're letting us order Starbucks today. Like they let us. We're, we're flying. You know, we're, we're orbiting the Earth, and we're right above Starbucks right now. We, we hit the brakes. We're just kind of sitting up here. Oh. And. We're going to drop a uh, rope down with a bucket. It's going to have money in it, um, but and I need to give you my order. So are you ready for that? Uh, is quick. this a joke? Oh, no, no, this is not a joke. We do this all the time. It's something that NASA let, lets us do a couple times a year. We'll just let us have normal civilian food. And, um, you know, we're, we've, we've lowered the space station down a little bit. We're going to drop a bucket down with the money. Like, you can take orders over the phone right just for the special circumstances yeah. okay great thank you um, so much can we, can I get a and, and quick chat room um tell me what uh astronauts in the chat room can you tell me what drinks you want we've got like six people up here we're gonna place orders for six give me one sec to get a pen and paper okay This is Russ. What can I do for you? Oh, hey, Russ. I don't know why she passed the phone over. I was just trying to place an order over the phone. Uh, she said uh, something like uh, you're ordering from the space station, so it threw her for a loop. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I, I'm sorry. I explained that to her. Um, I'm calling from the International Space Station. My name is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. And uh, we're doing this thing today where uh, they're, they're actually letting us get a little bit of civilian food. So we're going to place an order over the phone, and we're going to drop something down to pick up the food. Are you guys able to go on the roof by chance? No. Okay. Well, that's all right. We, we can put it on the ground too. It's just an extra, extra ten feet. We're just kind of low on rope. So uh, this is a joke, then? No, it's not a joke. Nope. I'm I'm getting ready to place my order. If, and you if, said something about being on the roof and lowering a rope. No, no, I'm not on the roof. We're I'm on the International Space Station, and we're gonna lower a bucket down out the window, and. It's going to show up there, and uh, like right in front of the front door. We've got it on the... We're, we're looking at... You know that isn't going to happen, because that's out in outer space, right? Right, but we can lower the rope down. Like Give me the, the break. The gra- I don't got time for all this stuff. Are you, you going to do a real order, or what are we doing? Yeah, I'm trying to, if you'll take my order, but we are going to be lowering a bucket. We can have capability. You have to be in the store to do it, so how would you make payment? We're going to lower money down. With uh, I'll put money, and I'll put like a brick on it, right, so the wind doesn't up. blow Bye. it away. <laughs> Oh, I like that guy. He was... He, he, <laughs> I liked how he knew I was completely full of shit. That was awesome. I guess. Uh, and you guys placed orders. I Like, I don't go to Starbucks. I don't know the orders. Vente ice water with extra ice. What the fuck? Buzz Lightyear wants a caramel fra- <laughs> frappuccino with no whipped cream. Neil Tyson wants bourbon. Uh, tang frapp. Mackie. Uh, what are these words? Jesus glad i don't go to starbucks i'd be pronouncing everything wrong they'd all make fun of me like you guys do so i might have to add, you know the chat room scrolled away i might need to ask you guys for orders again maybe hi ah, thanks for calling 
The Fucking Idaho place. Falls Target store. What? Target. What sucks about this um, mixer thingy is that I hooked it up <laughs> so I could put it on any channel. Like, you know, when, when, when I have a phone call, I could make them sound like that. And that was awesome. You know, I could put it on anything. And that worked great. You guys could hear it, but it turned out they couldn't hear it. Like, if I did the sound effect on my voice, you guys would hear it, but the phone calls would not hear it. I don't think I'm making any sense. I'm still working on this thing, though. I'm trying to find a better way to set it up. I'll figure it out eventually. Thank you for calling your Ballard QFC for the bakery or... QFC. Okay. All right, maybe Starbucks is a horrible idea. What else should I call? 7-Elevens? 7-Elevens believe anything, don't they? Some kind of a gas station? BP? How about come and go? I'll call come and goes. Thank you for calling your QFC. Yeah, yeah, I'm giving up on Starbucks. They're all located inside of supermarkets or something. Uh, Jim Bob wants me to quit calling. He's telling me just to quit the show. Should I just quit the show? Maybe I'll do that. Petco? <laughs> Why would I do Petco? They don't have food. I think 7 Eleven's good because they would have a bunch of junk food and sodas and stuff that they could throw into the bucket. And I forget who said it, but they said I the, they needed to seal the bucket up airtight so it didn't explode on the way up. Gotta be careful with those space buckets. Holy shit, Nautical, that's awesome. Call Petco and get service dog supplies for my service dog up in the space station. 7-Eleven and Granger, how can I help you? Hi, uh, this is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station up here in space. Ma'am, hello? Hello? I'm sorry, I lowered the wrong volume. What did you say? How was your response? Did you believe it? I said, did you call from where? Oh, I'm calling from the International Space Station. In uh, You know, up in space. We, we, we orbit the Earth, and we're right above your store right now. Like, directly above your store. Just knocked over my glass. Thank God it was empty. Always doing that. But yeah, I kind of want to do the Petco thing now because, you know, for my service dog. I'm going to try a few more 7-Elevens and then I might try Petco. Thanks for the idea, Nautical. Monkey food! That's perfect! Monkey food! Who said that? Where did that... 7-Eleven. Uh, Johnny Lemon. Oh, hey, 7-Eleven. Uh, this is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton from the International Space Station up here in space. We're orbit- orbiting the Earth right now and we're right above your store. Ma'am? Hello? Hi, uh, this is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling from the International Space Station up, yeah. up here in space. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm awesome. How are you? Oh, pretty good. Are you surprised to be getting a call from space? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, most people are. Um, so I na- would imagine. Yeah, yep, yep. Uh, so NASA, they're letting us do this thing today where we get to eat civilian food. Nice. So we're going to be ordering from you. Is that possible? Okay. You know, we'll give you a tip uh, and everything. You have to come pay for it first. Well, no, we're going to lower a bucket from... Ah, no, the, love it. Ma'am. No, I don't think we can do that, but it sounds pretty cool. No, ma'am, it's definitely possible. It, it's, it's technology invented by SpaceX. You know, they can do anything. We're going to be lowering I, a bucket. I believe they can, but I can't do anything without money first because they're, they're big beanies here. Ma'am, ma'am, there's going to be money in the bucket. Uh-huh. Dur. Okay. You'll take the money okay. out, and then you will put our merchandise into the bucket. You will. Mm-hmm. You, you have to seal it up really tight so it doesn't explode on the way back up. <laughs> well, I appreciate the offer, but I have to, like, say no, not this time. You're going to say no to an astronaut. You're going to say no to the United States of America. I am. You're kind of a yeah. dick. You're being kind of a dick to the United States of America. I'm and, not a dick. And I ask, don't have one of those. You don't have I what? A, a dick. Oh, you don't have a dick? Tell me more no. about this. Explain to me how you don't have a dick. Well, you know, I, I am female, so I don't have one. What do you have in place of a dick, ma'am? Pure love. Pure love. That's Pure weird. Love. I kind of want to see that, to be honest. <laughs> Is it just like staring into a, a glowing void vortex <laughs> thing of some sort? I gotta go, though. But thank you. That this made my day. I appreciate it. All right, you made my Bye-bye. day, too, even though we don't get snacks up yeah. here now. 
thanks to you. I mean, she's the one that brought it up, telling me she doesn't have a dick. What the hell? Why would she even say that? It's weird. <laughs> All right. Corbin's Corner. Man, now I'm getting... I'm, I'm kind of sad that now I have to... I'm going to have to leave soon. Maybe I'll stay on a little bit longer. Oh, anyway, Corbin's Corner. He wants me to call a gas station, say you're running low on fuel, and you're going to lower a hose down to refuel. I could tell them to just open up the underground tanks. All right, I'm looking for one. But I got to find... Oh, yeah, yeah, it has the, the prices on here. So, um, but that one I just called... They, uh, yeah, I can't do that one. So we're going to call this one 260 a gallon. We're going to need about 500 gallons of fuel out of the hose. Seven Eleven. Hi, 7-Eleven? Yep. Hey there, uh, this is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station up in space. Um, hold on one second. Okay, what are you doing? Who are you getting... Are you talking? Um, I'm getting the to. the manager. Okay. Is he a man or a woman? A woman. Oh God. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. One second. Thank you. Over. Over. Oh. Sorry. 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 One second. Sorry. No problem. Is he trained? I mean, is... Oh, hello? Hello? Hi. Um, who's this? This is Lisa. Who's this? Oh, hey, Lisa. This is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station up here in space. Okay. And um, we're right above your store right now, and we're going to need a little bit of help real quick. Okay. Uh, Like, we're low on fuel. And how much are you charging for regular unleaded right now? Because Google Maps is telling me $2.60. Is that accurate? Hello? Ma'am? It didn't hang up, but she stopped talking. There she goes. Here's another one that's $2.60 for unleaded. Or uh, I could do three twenty for premium. It is government money, so fuck it. Yep, like Nautical says, the space station does run on premium. Oh, here we go, two thirty nine. I mean, two ninety nine for premium. That's a better deal. Let me move the station, the space station, over a few blocks. <laughs> um, Charles McFly wants me to call up Jiffy Lubes and tell them that the ISS needs an oil change. That sounds fun. Oh, hey, look who it is. Hi, sunshine. Hey, look who it is. Yep. Hi, y'all. Hello. Diesel. It runs on diesel. Ah, of course. <laughs> Sunshine's making me leave the show in a little bit, so when I do quit the show in about 10 <sighs> or 15 minutes, <sighs> feel free to yell at Sunshine on Facebook. Great. I'm going to get hate mail. Thanks, Brad. Yep. Anytime. Let's try Ohio, I guess. I'm, I'm out of 7-Elevens that have gas in them. Or I could try Speedways in Indiana or something. Damn it, none of the 7-Elevens sell gas. Okay, Speedways. Or, um, what are their other gas stations? Oh, come and go. That's what we're going to do. Oh, wait, I forgot. Got to spell come with a K. This company. Come and go? Yep. Did you know there's a gas station in um, Colorado and surrounding states, and it's called Come and Go, K-U-M and Go. (laughs) No way. Are you serious? Yep. And their stations (laughs) sell t-shirts that say Come and Go, and they seem to be a popular item for some reason. I want one. (laughs) Yeah, I'd I'd get one. If if I'm ever there, I'm getting a Come and Go (laughs) t-shirt. All right. Come and Go, $2.55. Oh, wait. Nope. Nope. Sorry. Premium, $3.10. Vernon is telling me that Bone Cage just released a new song. This is Seth. Can I help you? Hi. Who's this? Oh, hey, Seth. This is uh, Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station up in space. Yeah. And um, we're uh, right above your station right now, and 
Um, we're going to need some fuel. So can you tell me how much premium is going for cur currently? Premium? Give me one second. Okay. All right, premium fuel is about three forty nine. Three forty nine. I mean, three dollars and four cents. Do you know how Sorry. much fuel is left in your underground tanks right now? Uh we actually just got a fuel stop in today. Was it premium? We don't see how many they put in. Okay. Well, no, it's it's cool. We'll just take whatever you have. Uh, we have four tanks. Uh, four tanks. Yeah, that's probably uh, that'll probably fill us up about a quarter tank up here, up here in space. Because um, right. okay, so what we're gonna do uh, in about five minutes, we're gonna lower a hose down from the sky. It's gonna be coming. You know, we're we're lowering it um, from the bottom of the International Space Station. It's gonna okay. be, it's gonna be a black hose. It's gonna drop from the sky, and I, I know it's gonna look weird, but it's it's fine. It's cool. It's safe. What are you doing? Alrighty. And um, we're gonna need. We're definitely gonna need premium. Like we can't have diesel or regular. Sorry, sunshine. Okay. And um, how long will that take to empty all four of those tanks? Or can we have all four? Hello? What? They want to get gas. They're hang up the phone. It's a prank call. No, it's not a prank call, sir. <laughs> Here, let me get to my manager. She'll, she'll be more helpful. Okay, well, it sounds like she hates the United States of America. Should I really talk to her? She, they hung up. <laughs> I don't know why. They, <laughs> they don't seem to believe that... I need gas from the International <laughs> Space Station. Uh, I'm going to do one more, and then we're going to call a couple Petco's, and I'm going to get out of here. Was that a come and go store? Yeah, it was come and go. And this one is too. Nice. I should just call that one back. Yeah, call Talk the manager that. back. Yeah. Ask her why she hates America. Because she's female. Yep. Female terrorist. <laughs> Thanks for calling. Come and go. This is Canberra. How may I help you? Hey, Canberra. This is uh, Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station up in space. Okay. And um, we're right above your store right now. We're about 200 miles above, but we're lowering. You know, we're going down a little bit. We're, um, we, we need to get some fuel for, this, for the space station. We're just about out. So is that going to okay. be, be a problem if we lower a hose from, from space? It's going to come out of the sky and you can just stick the gas nozzle in there and fill it up for us. I don't know if you have full service there or not, but could you maybe make an ex um, exception for us? I'm trying to think of how we could do it because we have the awning over the pumps. Oh, it, no, we'll, we'll, we'll drop it a little bit to the side and you can just walk it over there to the pump. Okay. Yep, and um, it, would it be cool if we do that in about 10 minutes? I, I think we'll, we'll be low enough in about 10 minutes. We'll just lower yeah, and is it just regular unleaded? Oh no, no! Don't put regular in there, please. It has to be premium. Regular will premium? make okay. yeah. Regular will make the space station explode, and you'll kill you will kill six <laughs> six astronauts. You don't want to do that. <laughs> right? Okay. Yep. All right, yep. then. Do you know which pump has the premium on it, or do you need me to tell you where you need to go? Oh no, it's going to be a really long hose, so you'll have plenty of slack. You know, you can just walk it on walk it on over to the correct pump. Okay. I'm so glad you're believing this. The last station hung up on me. We had to drive a few blocks north to get to your place. But thank you for okay. helping us out with this. All right. Um, can, uh, is there more than one person working there? Yeah. Okay, great. Cause, will one of them be able to go out there and fill up the tank for us? Yeah. Just just stick the nozzle in there into the hose and... Nope. Yeah, just just sit there, stand there and pump it for about eight hours. Should be... That should take care of all three tanks underground. All four tanks, I mean. Okay. Um, do you do you work a long shift today? Um, I'm only here till two. Okay. Well, you might have to have someone take over for you. It's going to take a while to fuel the International Space Station. Okay. Um, would it also be cool if we lower a bucket from a rope and um, we want to order a few things, like snacks and sodas and stuff? I don't know about that. Why not? What is that part too crazy? Yeah. Because we we place the order first, and you could tell me how much it is, and we'll just we'll put twenty bucks in the bucket for you. 
We'll put a brick um, on well, top. I'm kind of forming a line right now, so it'd be too hard to do that right at this second. Oh, okay, oh, fine. That's uh, you, you know what the fuel is the real important thing. Is someone okay. is someone going to be able to go out there and just stand and watch the sky for the hose? Yeah. Uh, who, which person's doing that? Yep. O- Olga's telling me we're almost there. Like it's going to be like within five minutes. Okay. So are you going to be out there watching? You got to grab it with your hand so it doesn't hit a car or something. Okay, I'll have to send somebody out there in a minute. So. Okay, it'll just be five minutes tops, and we'll we'll have the hose down there for you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, all right. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> what, what do you think? Did she believe that? <laughs> Well, I thought it was really thoughtful of her to be concerned about the awning, but thought it was too weird to drop a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit much. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. That was crazy. Okay. So I'm going to call a pet co and then we're going to get out of here. We're going to go do crazy things today. Absolutely crazy. Are you going to say, are you going to talk to a dog? Are you going to talk to a dog? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I might talk to a dog. I'm sorry. Okay. You guys, I'm abusing. I'm abusing <laughs> sunshine. Oops. I just hit her That's in the okay. mouth. Yeah, I've slapped you with a paper before. Come here. Yep. Yep. Oh. <laughs> Bad boy. I, I t- <laughs> Thank you for calling your neighborhood pet co, where you can get complete care for your pet. From local experts in grooming and training to all your nutrition and supplies. I feel like I wasted Please the whole show selection from the following menu. trying to call for grooming, people press one. at their for homes. To our store, press two. For customer service, press three. Or... Wait while I transfer your call. Everyone's favorite song. Hello, you're on the air, waiting for Petco. What's up, Massachusetts? Yeah, okay, good. What? Stop, stop yelling. Do you want to talk to him first? What? Do you want me to talk to him first? He, he's asking if you want... I, I hung up on him, I, like he was okay. cutting out or something. Also, I yeah, just, I didn't you know, understand him either. I'm in the middle of something. Can't talk to listeners? What the hell? Was that the call-in line you called in on, Mr. Massachusetts person? Yeah, I'm the Vastry, I'm pet nutrition expert. How can I help you? Hi, uh, this is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station. Hello, you know, how you, can we help you? You know, up in space. Um, we have kind of an issue up here, and um, we're flying over your store right now. We're orbiting right over your store. We're hitting the brakes and stopping. Cool. And, um, we're going to be, like, I, I have a blind service dog up here, and he's out of food. Like, do you think I could lower a bucket and you could put a, some dog food in and I'll, I'll put 20 bucks in it? We can put what? I'm, I'm going to lower a bucket out of the window of the International Space Station on a rope. And we're going to lower the bucket and it's gonna, we're going to just lower it and it'll land in your parking lot. And I just need a bag of dog food. A bag of dog food? Yeah, and yeah. What type of dog food do you need? Do you sell Old, old Roy there? Or is it Old Roy? Mm-hmm. Do not. That one is a um, Target Walmart type, I believe. We carry um, we carry Blue Neutro. We carry Imes. We carry. Oh, I like Imes. Imes is, Imes is good. Imes sounds perfect. I, I need a big bag though. It's got to last. I'm, I'm up here in space for the next couple months till I go back home. Me and him go back home. Okay. Yep, I'm blind. I'm a blind astronaut. I'm the reason they had to put the uh, braille underneath all of the control panels and stuff. They hate me okay. up here, to be honest. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's cool. I'm I'm used to it. You know, us us blind people and service dogs. Everyone always giving us crap about it. There you go. Yep. So, how much is a a really large bag? Of Imes. Yep. Any any flavor. He doesn't care. You need like what a forty pound bag is what you're asking for? Sure, that sounds good. Will, will that fit in the bucket? Um, I don't know how big your bucket is. Um, it's a five gallon bucket. It's one of those Home Depot buckets. Yeah, that's not. If you need a forty pound bag, that's not going to fit inside your bucket. Inside my. Okay. Um. Well, could I get maybe one or two bags that would fit inside the bucket? 
Or you could just pour the bag out into the bucket. See, I'm going to lower the bucket down from space. You're going to see it come from the sky. And I'm going to have money. I'm going to put like a $20 bill in there. Sure. And, or or how mu- however much it is. How much, how much money was, is it going to cost to fill the bucket? For Iams, all we have um, right now is just a puppy and a small bag. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. That works. I'm not, uh, you sure. know, who cares? He's a dog. He can eat anything. Sure. So yep. it's probably me around for two small bags. You're looking about, about 30, 30 something dollars. 30. Okay. I can do that. I'll put in sure. a little bit extra because I know this is a lot of trouble. No, it's okay. Don't okay. you worry about it. Um, can you go out in the parking lot and wait for the bucket to come down? I'm going to come and wait for the bucket. Don't you worry. Okay, like you just stand by the front doors, but when you see the the bucket coming down, can you run out there and grab it? Because otherwise, the wind could blow it into a car, and we don't want to damage anyone's cars. Sure, not a problem. Okay, are you going out there now? Because we're we're within just like three minutes. We're almost we're we're lowering it out the window. I'll be there outside in two seconds. Okay. Hey, is cat's milk? Is it made with real cat's milk? Sorry. Nothing. Okay, five minutes. That sounds great. Well, well, I mean, like two minutes. Just two minutes. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, what's your name again? Ah, fuck. I want to call back and ask. Yeah. Regret jumping says you should ask if they sell monkey diapers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Someone. That's a really good idea. <laughs> <laughs> someone else told me I needed to um, do the monkey thing. That sounded weird. Yeah, like say I had a monkey <laughs> instead of a dog because that would make more sense. Because yeah. monkeys always go to space. Yeah. I think they have like three of them on the space station. Thank you, know you for that? calling your we neighborhood pet co. You know, where you can get complete dog food from care space for your for pet. Sure. From local experts <laughs> in grooming yeah. and training. Yeah, that's just stupid. <laughs> while <you're> nutri- <laughs> Wait while I transfer your call. <laughs> All right. Thank you for calling pet co, the dog training experts. This is Devin. How can I help you? Hi, Devin. Uh, this is... Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton from the International Space Station. I'm calling you from space. Okay. You, you, you know what the International Space Station is, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So we're right above your store right now, up in space. And um, I needed to find out. We, we need to get some supplies. We're going um, to lower something down for you guys to, to bring some supplies up to us. And I needed from Petco? To, yeah, yeah. We're, we're right above your store right now. You're, you're there on point, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, we're going to lower uh, a bucket on a rope from the International Space Station. You're going to see it come out of the sky. But I wanted to find out if you had um, diapers for monkeys. No, I can't say we do. You might want to try the zoo for that one. Well, do you have diapers for anything? Like any kind of diaper? We have diapers for dogs. Would they fit a monkey? Probably not. Well, are they for big dogs or little dogs? Like what? They're for both. What like what size of diapers do you have? Like what what kind of size? I si- like Star Trek soundtrack in the background. Uh, no, you're probably here in the International Space Station control panel. Yeah, it sounds like Star Trek. Sounds like. A well, who are you? Are you are you just like a big nerd or something? How do you even know that? My parents are nerds. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm I'm just you. You don't know what you're talking about. Like we we use like real authentic. Um, sounds up here on the control board, and they modeled them after the old Star Trek show. What's the big deal? That's that's awesome. I'm just I'm trying to do my real job right now. Oh, I have a real job too. I'm getting paid to be up here on the space station, so you don't have to that's be like, awesome. You don't have to be like that to me. Just just do your job and go find out how much the diapers are. The diapers come in various different sizes. It depends on what size you want, whether it's disposable, non-disposable. I see. Okay, quick, do your job and tell me which sizes you have and how much. It ranges from extra small to extra large, ranging it, anywhere from nine dollars to twenty nine dollars. Hmm. Could we get like one of each? Because I'm not really sure which size he wears. In you know, in dog diapers. Yeah, sure. And how much would that be for one of each? We're for gonna, one of each, I don't know. I'd have to ring it out. I can't do the math off the top of my head. We're, we're gonna lower uh, money down on the bucket, so we have to know in advance. You guys don't have credit up in will the you, ISS? Will you take a credit card uh, on the... Oh, sorry, sorry, interference. Will you take credit cards over the phone? No, we can't do that. Then why are you asking? Oh, you want us to put our credit card in there and you can just swipe it? That's a good idea. Yeah. Do you need my ID too? Probably not. Okay. 
I guess if the rope's coming out of the sky, then you probably know, you know who it is. Yep. Not too many people can impersonate that, can they? No, I can't say they can. Yep. Okay. Well, I appreciate the help, even though you have a major attitude. Um, do you think? Alrighty. You have a great rest of your day. Can you take the diapers out into the parking lot for me, though, and wait? Because we're going to have a bucket come from the sky? Yeah, absolutely. I'll have it waiting for you. Okay, are you getting them all right now? Are you putting them in a cart? Yes, I it, am. It's going to be in about five minutes. Can you hurry? Yep, miss, it's, it's all ready miss, to go. Miss, miss Attitude? All ready. You have a great rest of your day. What was your favorite Star Trek episode? You damn nerd. Um, I like how she just kind of stumbled and yeah. <laughs> trailed off. Uh, 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 <laughs> Click. <laughs> Good times. I like that she recognized the Star Trek noise. And she doesn't even watch it. She, like her it's parents. her parents. Yeah, they're the big nerds. Yep. But I never watched either, and I know that noise. So I think that's it. We're going to get out of here. Oh, sorry. Uh, Interference from the space station. <laughs> sorry. Um, thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for all the ideas. Sorry I wasted the first half of the show on uh, calling residents that didn't pick up. Just a bunch of ringing phones and stuff. Happy wants me to never say bucket again. Just say container. A space container. <laughs> a space container that says uh, Home Depot on the side. And is orange. <laughs> and a five gallons. Of course. <laughs> Um, so you guys, I just noticed I, I'm a huge asshole. I'm just noticing that today. Um, <laughs> I, I uh, like Mob. Oh shit! Where is it? Mob Seven. He did a. He started doing a show like ten minutes before I started doing a show. I didn't Aww. see the notification come up. I'm I'm just a big dick. I'm sorry, Mob Seven. I stole your show. You started yours like ten or fifteen minutes before me, I think. So I, I'm sorry. Sorry, Mob 7. Are you sorry, Sunshine? I am. I like Mob 7. He's yeah. Well, awesome. I, I'm not saying I like him. We're not going that far, but... <laughs> I think he's sweet. I'll like everybody <sighs> for you. So, like, I don't know. Everyone, like, here, I, I can make it up by um, telling everyone to go to Mob 7's chat room. Maybe he'll do a show after my show, or maybe he's gone. I probably ruined his only chance to do a show this week. So, Mixler.com slash Mob underscore 7. Not really sorry. I'm just being nice. I hope everyone has an awesome weekend. Even me? Even you. I'll try it. <laughs> All right, I'll try and put the show up this weekend, you guys, but I probably won't. Well, yeah, yeah, I should be able to do this Sunday night. So I'll get this up on the podcast feed. I will edit out all the bullshit, which there will be a lot of, and the show will be about half the size it is now. So be looking for that. See you guys next time. Infinite, Bye. In- infinite power. Infinite. In- infinite power. Infinite. In- infinite power. Power. Power.